Imagine you could treat depression as effectively as an antidepressant while decreasing your body weight, waist size, blood pressure, and heart rate variability at the same time for free. According to a recently published study, start running. I won't bore you with the details, but the study included 141 patients with depression and or anxiety disorder who participated in 16 week treatments of medication or group-based running therapy. 45 received medication while 96 underwent running therapy. The results? While the interventions had comparable effects on mental health, running therapy outperformed antidepressants on physical health due to both larger improvements in the running therapy group as well as larger deterioration in the antidepressant group. Those are the results. Take them and apply them to your life however you wish to do so. Now, I want to have a larger conversation on this topic, specifically the language that's used around mental health. And the reason I want to talk about that is because I don't believe people always use the most accurate language to describe what they're going through. Take the top voted reply that I saw on Twitter, which is how I originally found out about this study. Not always comparable in real life. Some need an SSRI just to function, let alone go for a run. But running is amazing for sure. And I've heard other people use similar language, like I can't get out of bed, I can't go for a walk. Can't or really, really, really don't want to. The participants in this study give us one example to show that it can be done. Not only did 96 participants do the running therapy, but the running therapy group was larger because of a greater preference for that type of intervention. So not only did 96 participants do the running therapy, something many people say they can't do without an SSRI, they chose to do it. Interesting, right? But not only have the people in the study proven that it can be done, they've also proven that between the two options, that running therapy is objectively the better option. That's not a personal belief that I hold, that's what the data in this study is showing us. In terms of what we can measure, the antidepressant group showed a significant within-group decrease in heart rate variability, an increase in weight, an increase in C-reactive protein, and borderline significant increases in diastolic blood pressure and triglycerides. The running group, significantly different changes in the other direction. So just to reiterate, not only was there a gap in the results between the running group and the antidepressant group because of the positive benefits of running, but the gap actually got bigger because of all the negative effects of antidepressants. But that's just scratching the surface because the study is only measuring that which we can measure in a scientific setting. The study can't measure the immeasurables. And it all starts with the choice. The choice to do something hard or to do something as simple as swallowing a pill. When you do something hard, many things happen. Fighting against yourself every single step when your brain, your lungs, your legs are saying stop and you say, fuck you. The sense of pride after weeks or months of running, knowing that you did something you didn't want to do. And in the event that you end up enjoying running, the humility of knowing you didn't hate running, you just hated sucking at running. Think of all the things in life that will force you to take a step back and reevaluate. Is it the artistic gene that I lack or a lack of practice? Am I capable of way more than I thought I was? To me, that's the most inspiring part about reading this study. These people who, according to the study's inclusion criteria, were having a current depressive disorder or anxiety disorder, not only was the running therapy effective from a physical and mental point of view, but these people opted into it. They didn't have to. They could have left the study to chance and been randomly thrown into one of the groups but they chose to do the harder option. Face reality, accept difficulty. Whatever your life circumstances are, the situation is the same. Suffer now or suffer later. If you're overweight, physical exercise is going to be very uncomfortable. If you're depressed, getting up to get started will feel impossible. If your body is stiff, loosening it up will be painful. But take that fact and really internalize it. I'm having to tell myself this a lot lately, I have a newborn baby and finding the time to train is hard and honestly, I don't really want to. I could say, 
I have a kid now. It's hard. Plenty of other parents share my struggle. Or I can take the time to readjust my schedule and account for that. Action in the form of physical exercise is going to be difficult. You have your reasons. I have my reasons. Other people have theirs. Now what? Do you say, it's okay, man. You don't have to do it anymore. Or do you accept that fact and give it your best shot? Before I finish, I just wanna say I truly feel for anybody out there who's suffering from depression or anxiety. I don't want anything I've said in this video to come off as dismissive. I'm simply trying to provide helpful information with a perspective you're not going to get anywhere else. This is a very heated topic and people are very opinionated about it. So when I see a study come out with an alternative that's 100% natural, 100% free, but it's ridiculed as if you're shaming the people who didn't know about this option or aren't choosing it, I can't help but wonder why. Why is a cost-free natural alternative to pharmaceutical medication being ridiculed so quickly? Why do the results of a study like this imply to you that we're dismissing mental health. The responses to a study like this haven't made much sense to me, but the study itself and the results do. So for that reason, I decided to share it with you. If you're feeling brave enough to leave your own thoughts about this study or the topic of mental health, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to know what you think. And if you guys would like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider liking the video and maybe even subscribing to the channel. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.